Hey everyone, welcome back to Taproot TV. I'm Benna Hughes and I'm here with Mark Paradise and we've been doing a back to basics. Yes. Haven't we? We, we talked a, a little bit about root causes earlier and root cause analysis. Now we're going to go into incident investigations, which is basically your systematic process to figure out the uh, root causes of problems and then you want solutions to fix them. And you Definitely. have talked about this with a lot of people on a lot of different, um, you've been on industry standard committees. And so you you definitely are the, the expert here. So. Thank you. So let's let's dive into this. Let's let's go ahead and def, what's a def, basic definition of an incident? Okay. So once again, it isn't easy to define things that you think are simple words. What's yeah. an incident? <laughs> oh, what's an incident? So we think of incidents as the worst consequence that happened in a sequence of events. So that thing that. You know, when somebody got killed, or somebody sprained their ankle, or some quality problem happened, or a, a piece of equipment broke, if that's the worst thing that happened, then that's the mm -hmm. incident. Now, you could make up the sequence of events where all that stuff happened, and then there was a fatality mm -hmm. at the end. So there were, there were minor things that happened before the big thing happened. Right. But the big thing is what we call the incident. That's it. Okay. That's what, what got the in investigation started. And, and the seriousness of that big thing can be, um, it, it's the thing that actually happened. So, so you may have an incident where nothing big really happened, but something big could have happened. happened. And we call that a precursor incident. It's a precursor to a worse accident happening. We really like to catch those up front. Boy, because yes. hey, this is the key. In aviation, they found that there's usually five, six, seven, a dozen precursor incidents, they call them near misses, prior to a major accident happening. So your your system, if you mm -hmm. will, is giving you a chance to find the problems and fix them before the big accident happens. And that's what we like our clients to do, is to find the causes and fix them before the big accident happens. Yes, that's definitely what we yep. want people to do. Do that uh, proactive work ahead of time and yep. stop them from happening. Um, okay, well, those can be done as a simple investigation a right. lot of times. So let's talk about simple investigation. Okay, so precursor incident. Not every investigation is worth the same level of investigation, right? right? You've got some some precursor incidents. You're going to say, I'm just going to assign a single person. They're going to do a simple investigation. But you want them to have good results. Mm -hmm. So you don't want them um, to come up with bad results because if you have bad results on a precursor incident, you don't prevent the major accident. Right. So the whole point of doing precursor incidents is get good corrective action that keeps the big accident from happening. So you ought to have a systematic process. Mm -hmm. You ought to avoid common problems, things like placing blame and cognitive biases that, um, that keep you from finding good root causes. And you ought to have some best practices that you're following to find root causes. And this isn't the root cause um, talk, so right. I'm not going to go into all those, but we'll put some links in the in the write-up we have to go with this that'll help you find better ways to do root cause analysis. But some people say, well, listen, these best practices, they're just too complicated. They're just too hard. I can't do all this stuff for that. And, and so then I really say there was really two, two options for you. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, if it isn't worth investigating well, don't investigate it. Just don't investigate right. it. Right. And that, that can be the right answer. I mean, you really should not be investigating paper cuts. Yeah. And, and sometimes people get almost that bad because they're saying, well, every lost time injury I'm going to investigate. Well, some of those lost time injuries were never going to become anything worse than what they are. Yes, they needed, they had a sprained ankle, but they were never going to go beyond their spraining their ankle, and it isn't worth a big investigation into a sprained ankle. Some of them have those policies, though, in place that if, it, if they ended up having to go to the doctor, then they've got so, to do a little so investigation. So it is possible to change yeah. your policy. Yeah. <laughs> it is possible. So the first one is, if it's too complicated to do, which I don't think it has to be, yeah. but like, if you say it is, then don't investigate yeah. it if it's not worth it. Okay. And the second one is, if it really does require a good investigation and you aren't willing to do it, well, then you ought to try something really simple like spinacause. We ought to put a, <laughs> we ought to put a spinacause spinner in here spinning about we now should. so that people can see what it looks like. But the idea is that, you know, don't waste your time doing bad investigations, getting bad results, and then implementing bad corrective actions right. 
and, and when it's not going to fix anything. Mm -mm. And you're just kidding yourself that you really are doing a good investigation yeah. when you're not. It's a waste so of don't time do it. It's a money. waste of time, both yeah. both ways. Yeah. All right. So we hope you don't get to a major accident investigation, but occasionally you'll have those. And and I, you know, you hope you never have to have one. But if you have one, you ought to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And, and the whole idea behind this is there's a lots of there's lots of things you're going to need to know because you're going to have a full team doing the investigation. Um, you may have regulatory people looking over your shoulder, or you may have a whole separate regulatory investigation. Even worse, you may have a criminal investigation yeah. going on. This is really a big deal. Um, so you, you you there's going to be a lot more management attention focused. It's going to be a much more in depth investigation. You're going to have to use a lot more tools and things to do your investigation than you do on a simple investigation. You're going to have a lot better documentation. You're going to have to have a lot better collection of evidence. You're going to have to have a lot better maintaining your evidence. Um, all these things that you need to do, it's a lot more complicated when you have a major investigation and it makes it harder to learn. Imagine how, how uh, nervous your witnesses are going to be if somebody died. Right. And then they're going to they're going to feel guilty themselves. Yes. They're going to want to make sure nobody else gets blamed. If there's a criminal investigation going on, yeah. they're the going to want They're going to want oh insane. gosh, is somebody going to go to jail over this? Right. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Maybe I shouldn't say what I saw. Um, so it's really hard to get good information in a really serious investigation. However, in that precursor incident we talked about, Nobody's too worried. Why? Nothing really bad happened. But the causes are the mm -hmm. same causes that are in that major yeah. investigation. So you have a lot better chance of learning the things you need to fix in the simple investigation if you put the investigative effort in than you do in the major investigation where it's much harder. So you, that's once again, yeah. I'm back to the precursor investigation. Do a good job. You're Don't very get passionate to this. about that. Well, yeah, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. I mean, I would much rather. Um, have some what looks like a minor incident mm -hmm. but could have been much worse investigated well and prevent that big yeah. thing that could happen than have a fatality to investigate exactly that's really the the thing and and okay so for big investigations there's several different kinds of information you collect mm -hmm. I, mean, I talked about collecting information there's people evidence mm -hmm. that's mainly interviewing right there's paper evidence that's all the paperwork we always keep for all these things that mm -hmm. happen there's physical evidence that's like when you go out in the plant mm -hmm. and you take pic well no pictures would be the other thing recordings mm -hmm. um, and so recordings is the last kind recordings it's amazing how much now is on video yeah. it's Everything. like everything's <laughs> on video nowadays so so you've got another source of information that you didn't used to have and all those things you're going to have to go out and collect you're going to have to look at them and see how they make sense um, and, and you're going to have a whole systematic process for collecting that information and we'll put stuff in the in the notes for this video yeah. about that and links to it um, you know, Barb here is just a really expert on, on doing that. And so I'll put some links to some of her videos and some of the things you can learn from her on collecting information it's for a, a big investigation. Science. Yeah, I mean, there's it is. so much, you know, so much more than just asking somebody a question. It's, you know, like you talked about the emotions involved and well, stuff like the that. The interviewing part oh of it gosh. is just there's huge amounts to learn there about is. how you do an interview. And it's very, so important because people are so uptight in that major investigation. Yes that you conduct those interviews right to get the right information. You could make or break one dependent getting wrong information, bad information. Or no information. Or none, yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of times what they don't say rather than what they do say. It's so interesting. Uh, Barb does have so much great information about that. So we'll put so a bunch like of links said, in here. Will, so she's done a bunch of videos oh, for us. Oh, she sure has. All right, so when it comes to, we've done that. We've done the evidence gathering and stuff. So then you're going to develop your incident sequence of events. Yep. Um, because that's what all this information you're collecting is about, is understanding what happened. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand what happened um, before you can understand why it happened. And 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 that whole thing leads down to root causes, which we've done a whole other video. Right. Maybe I'll need to put a link in here to the root cause video. That's a good idea. Because you, you get all that information, you put it together, and then you're going to go find the root causes. And when you're done with root causes, what's next? Causal factors. Well, causal factors, <laughs> generic causes, Corrective actions. Yes. You got to develop corrective actions, and you got to get management to approve those corrective yes. actions. So the thing about an incident is that there's really a process to doing this investigation. 
you know, it starts out with information collection and it ends up mm -hmm. with approvals. And, and you have to know as an investigator how to step through this process and what tools you're going to use when and how you're going to keep people coordinated and who, what information do you need to gather first and how do I need to put that information, how do I keep management briefed as we're going along. So, because you know they're going to want to know what well, of course. they're going to want to know tomorrow what the yes. answer is of an incident that happened today, and you aren't going to know tomorrow. So you're going to need to be able to give them briefs on what you're doing, but have them not jump to conclusions. So there's a lot to there's know so as much. the guy who's the pr in charge or the woman who's in charge of this investigation that you really um, you can't just do this for the first time and expect to be successful. That's why we just, like them doing those precursor incidents. Give oh, them it, practice. It does give them practice, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it does. We love for people to do that. All right, well, so much involved in incident investigations as well. So, again, a very good reminder of what all is involved. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, let me to ask this? you this question. Sure. How are you going to measure the effectiveness of your investigation? How do you know if you were successful or not? It doesn't happen again. Ha -ha, great answer. <laughs> you got it. So, so repeats, right? Yes. Repeats. So, if you, if you want to see if you're successful or if you've been successful, you could go back and look at like 10 years worth of history and you start with the old ones and you see what the causes are. If you've got a database, this makes it a lot easier. So much easier. You don't have to read yeah. years and years of investigations and you see, are they repeating? Mm -hmm. If they're repeating... Something's going wrong. So, so I got two, two ones to think about here. Um, in space. They had the Challenger incident, right? Yes. We're, we're blasting off and we have a tank leak and it blows up and astronauts die. Mm -hmm. Should have the investigation of that incident, which told them they had problems with their flight safety, prevented their next accident, which was the Columbia. So that's a good question, that is right? A good question. How close do they have to be? Yeah. Um, and this time we were talking about flight safety and they had another flight in safety incident. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't. A tank leaking going up. Right. This was on landing coming in because going up, they'd had a piece of ice break off, damage the tiles underneath that thing. Right. Now they've got a sort of a hole in their protection mm -hmm. of that when it comes down with the fireball underneath mm -hmm. it. That fireball went up inside, started burning things up, and they it <laughs> broke up and they all died, right? Yeah. So then we've had two major fatalities. Should have that first one prevented the second one? I don't, I don't have to answer that question, but yeah. it's but it's one they should have been th thinking about. Yes. And, and definitely by the second investigation, I should have thought, well, gosh, why didn't we figure out we need to look at all the flight safety problems rather than just the O-rings? Second one, this is another good one, mm -hmm. BP Texas City, they yeah. blow up a part of the refinery, kill a bunch of people. Why? And that's a process mm -hmm. safety incident. Yes. And they found out they needed to change their process safety culture. Decade later, they have um, the Deepwater Horizon accident. That's a process safety incident, and but it's in not a refinery, mm -hmm. but it's in their offshore exploration part of the business. So once again, should have they learned from that first one over in the refineries so that they would have fixed their process safety offshore? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of those ones that, oh. That would boggle the mind. Yeah, it is. So it's not just, we blew up this tower yesterday, are we going to blow it up again next week? Yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not the repeat you're looking right. for, although that would be really bad if you did. It would be very bad. But, but it's, did we learn the more generic things, and did we apply them across the whole company to get rid of whole classes of incidents rather than we just have to keep blowing things up at all our different facilities yeah. to learn the lessons we need to learn? We definitely want them to share their lessons. Like exactly, and, and to learn across the company. Yes. Um, you know, a mom and pop place, mm -hmm. um, if, if you run a popcorn stand and somebody burns themselves, you're going to learn about the oil and everybody there is going to know about it. But if you own a gigantic popcorn yeah. um, facilities that have facilities all over the world, you don't want to have to burn people at all the different facilities to learn about hot grease or whatever. Right. So or across it's the, industry. It's the same. Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Should have they been able to learn from the Columbia accident or the Challenger accident and maybe learned not flight safety but process safety things. That's a little tougher. Yeah. Because it's every time you get a little further away, it's a little tougher to say, does that apply to me? Yeah. And so, you know, that's just one of those things. It's always good then to go back and check. Yep. Go back and, and look at what's going on in your company. Wow, I tell you, uh, that's some real important stuff. 
Those those (laughs) incidents that got me a little anxious. There we go. (laughs) Well, we want you all to be able to do great investigation. So uh, that's why we do this. We we sit here and we put this information out here to you. So it gives you things to think about and learn from. And, you know, you never know. It it may trigger a thought in you to help. And you do such a good job answering questions you've never been asked before. And then come up with the answers. Deer in the headlights look, didn't I? Um, I was really grateful. Um, So we do appreciate you all. Um, We're going to put links to a lot of these things we talked about in some of these videos so we can help you keep learning and improving your program. So that's what we're here for. Mark, thank you so much. I learned a lot today. Thank you, Ben. So I appreciate it. Thank you.